Welcome to episode four of the Dishes and Fishes podcast. Today's guest has been fishing the waters of Connecticut for over 30 years, primarily from a kayak, super knowledgeable guy, really good guy. Today's guest is Mike McCran. Thanks for coming, Mike. Yeah. yeah no. <laughs> first guest. I'm, I'm the first? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Wow, you guys are lucky. I know. <laughs> And I don't need Pleasure. any introduction. We all know who I am. That's it. Trusty first mate. Is Trusty first mate. I haven't moved up in the ranks. Not yet, man. You're, you'll get there. Trying. Ma- right. Mike's Mike's here today to slide up the ranks. Hopefully. Yeah, I gotta go fishing with you guys. So, <laughs> you see how bad how bad you are. I don't think we both fit in my yeah. boat. Yeah, either you guys both get kayaks. And... I'll just pull them from a tube behind the boat. So you you told me you've been fishing for over thirty years. Yeah, yeah. I started when I was a little kid. Um, you know, pretty much just fishing with my dad. All in Connecticut. Uh, Connecticut and Mass. Uh, my family used to have a place at uh, West Hill Lake. Synonymous with West Hill Pond, I'm assuming? Yeah, same, yeah. same thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. Well, my grandfather built a log cabin up there, and uh, we ended up selling that years, years back. But it was good fishing up there. I think the state record brown was caught? I believe so. Yeah. There's some, some kind of state. My dad used to go spear fishing in there. <laughs> spear fishing for the trout? Tarpon. Yeah, Tarpon. bass. I mean, and there's giant, there's giant eels in there. Yeah? Like Six-foot eels. Like spear fishing, like... Caveman spearfishing? Like, like scuba. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Holy crap. But uh, yeah, no, I, I went night fishing with him, and um, there were eels eating the trout. Savages. What was he shooting with a spear gun? Bass? Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. I, I like that. Yeah. Another thing. Yeah, you cook him up. Because I'm petrified of kayaks, because I don't want to invest money in one and then flip it over and lose all the money I spent in one. You're going to be shocked. Kayak's where it's at, man. I started on like one of the little cheap ones where you feel like you're going to die. Yep, pretty much. And, like the um, sit-ons? No, this is the yeah, sit-in. Okay. You're yeah. in it, and the water's like at your ears. If you, if you sneeze, it's like anything, you move, the water's coming in. But, and to get out of them after you're on the water for six hours? Oh, it's like a Russian roulette. Your legs are numb. <laughs> you're 300 pounds. And it's like, but yeah, I, st- I started on that. Um, you know, just probably going out with like two rods on me. Yeah. And that's actually when I caught that large pike. It was like a 15-pound pike, and I had no net. And uh, that, that was that 15 was fun. pounds. 15 nice. pounds. That yeah. was that was Matabasset River. It was awesome. I got him on 10 pound test on a drop shot. And uh, it was like a 20 pound um, fluorocarbon leader and just fought him. It was early spring and just fought him for about 30 minutes. Got him in, tired him out. And I was able to get him by the gills and I actually got pictures. I'll send you pictures. So actually, I took him and just flopped him right in my lap. I can throw a picture in there. Yeah. All right. Yeah. He ended up taking a crap on me. Oh, absolutely. That's it was big enough where it stunk. Yeah, dude, we. Every time we catch a pike, we're like, don't poop in the boat, don't poop in the boat. Don't poop. <laughs> yeah. like, they're just like... They always do. How did, you, how did you do this year with pike? Because we haven't caught... We didn't catch any. This year, I caught a little tiny guy. That was yep. it. Uh, I got monster pickerels, though. I missed out all year long. Yeah, I say that I've, I've had pickerel on that I thought were pikes. Yep. But they were just extremely large pickerel. Yeah. Like five, um, six pounds. Like last year, when like bass was slow, we just said, oh, we'll throw like a white spinner. If we wanted to switch gears, we always went for the pike afterwards just for fun. And this year, we couldn't. We just couldn't hook up. If I can't get anything to bite, I go to drop shot. Yeah. John three seventeen. Yeah. This, <laughs> no, I'm serious. Every. <laughs> oh, um. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, everything's so cold it doesn't want to move. Everything, yeah. everything's sitting there like. <laughs> yeah. Throw the drop shot, boy. And put the drop shot in, and just kind of sit there and. Yeah. The, and they're so lazy. They're so lazy. It's like having a donut right here. Yep. And then they just oh. kind of... I don't think I've caught a pike on a drop shot, though. What are you using? I, I was using... They're called um, Fish Arrow. It's a Japanese brand. Okay. And actually, I brought some with me. So nice. Gonna... Show and tell? Yeah. They're a little... Uh, I use... Well, I've got seven-inch ones, but for the drop shot ones, I want to say they're three-inch. You got some secrets coming out here. And uh, yeah, they're, they've got like foil inside of them. They look like real fish. They're, they're pretty cool. But uh, I throw one of those on there. I mean... Maybe put a little fish scent on it because they don't actually smell like anything. Yeah, and uh, yeah, kill it. That and Kitex. Yeah, absolutely. My, my wife is gonna watch this episode. And she's gonna be like, "Yeah, he's spending more money on tackle." Yeah. <laughs> like the motto of the show is, "We're sorry, Chris." Yeah. <laughs> I tell you, what, I stick to a lot of the same stuff. Like I like Z-Man plastics. Yep. Um, for a lot of the swimmer fish, but I like Kitex the best for their their movement. They're I, soft, but they get destroyed. You go through them like underwear. Oh yeah, absolutely. But, Hence my tackle wall has all Kai Tech. So this episode, we're actually going to do the, uh, the Dishes and Fishes Tackle Tournament. I made like a bracket with 32 brands, and we're going to go through it and pick and see which one wins. Because I figured you would have used a ton of gear. Yeah. So I've, Z-Man's on there, Kai Tech's on there. So Z-Man stuff's like 
awesome. Oh, dude, you catch a hundred fish uh, on it. <laughs> yeah, the only problem is I use a lot of the uh, spring hooks. Yep. And you got to be like Schwarzenegger to get that spring in the nose. <laughs> That's the only thing. So other than that, you got to do like an EG, uh, EWG hook or something. Yeah. Yep. Without the spring, but yeah. But they're they're great uh, plastics. You said uh, there's nothing like kayak fishing. So I I do I have a couple of videos maybe one or two on my channel I, I do some kayak fishing but i have it's like a feather light kayak for like a 10 year old and like uh it's the sit-in there's no rod holders i got it for a hundred dollars on facebook marketplace like eight years ago so like it's like very primitive kayak fishing like i have the rods in between my legs when i'm paddling like <laughs> yeah, it's, but that's all you need absolute zero that's electronics all you if you're yeah. starting off that's all you need so so i want i want you to t talk about like why you think kayak fishing is the best well, I, uh, for instance, when I'm on the river, I see guys, a lot of bass boats can go in the shallows, but mm -hmm. they can't go in the shallows I can go in. I, I mm -hmm. can operate into, I think it's like five and a half inches of water. Yep. And a lot of times, either the bowfin or the pike or the bat, they're in the super shallows when they're spawning. And these guys, they can't get past the sandbars. Yep. And I'm just pulling in the fish. <laughs> yep. And they just sit there and just shaking their head and they're aggravated because they can't get to where I can. Right. So when you go fishing for those, do you have to drive your car? kind of close to that or do you have like the foot pedals or no mine i've i've got an old town uh predator and i have a big water okay but they're they're both the same kayak yeah yeah which my, my dad's gonna be using one of them and i got another new one but um they're like fishing legit fishing kayaks. legit fishing kayaks yeah. and believe it or not like they you can reach up like six miles an hour doing the pet not even trying yeah. the oh, pedal drives you ever thought about going to like uh the motorized motor? yeah you can but then you got to register them you go electric, you got to give the state your money. Open up your, open up your wallet. Yeah. Oh, God. No way. Oh, yeah. See, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. I it become, know it that. becomes a boat. You got to register it. You got numbers and everything. It's wow. Registration numbers. Yeah, I'd rather just pedal. And it's the comparison is like, yeah, boats are awesome. I mean, obviously, you can get places faster. But the kayaks would be like a comparison to, of like a bike compared to a, boat, a car. Mm -hmm. you're, you're right on the water. It's quiet. It's peaceful. The water is like right there. And on the new ones, you could stand up and have a fish. Yep. You got to take a leak. It's perfect. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen videos. And I uh, when I first moved to Connecticut before I had my boat, I did all kayak. And I literally – I didn't know anything. So I would just Google Earth, like Oxford, Connecticut. And then I would find the ponds and I would drive my car. I had a Subaru Outback. Shouts out Subaru at the time. And I just strapped my little tiny kayak on the top. And I would just dump it in whatever I found. Yeah. And that's why I like the kayak. And I yeah, that's, that's the thing, because you can get to where other guys can't. And if they can get there, they're fishing from shore. And I shit you not, the fish are in the middle of the lake. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're like, they know. That's what I don't get. Like, most people, you're in a boat, you cast to shore. And if you're at shore, you cast out. Yeah, so it doesn't make no sense. It doesn't make any sense. But they're, they're in both places. But like I said, using and rigging up the kayaks, I've got, like I said, Lowrance, uh, HDS Live. Oh my gosh! I've got the uh, active target <laughs> built into it. So you have the the pedal drive kayak, the Lawrence HDS like nine, yeah, the nine inch that's mounted right on the side. Dang! And I've got the, like I said, the active targets on the right hand side, and that's got a pole system. I can sit there and turn it and lift it up. If I get in the shallows, that can come right up. And then I've got the, the down scan, side scan, sonar, everything. Yep. And that's the kayak's actually um, it's notched out on the on the base mm -hmm. for the transducer. So you can, it's going to hit the bottom of the kayak before the transducer ever gets touched. Wow. Oh, it has a spot for it. So, yes, yeah, so it's transducer safe. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So it's, it's a fishing <laughs> kayak. Like I said, it's, it's pretty sturdy. It's not the sturdiest. There yeah. are sturdier models, but this one is like the fastest. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, six miles per hour. I mean, that's, it's impressive. That's faster than most trolling motors I could, are going to pull you. It'll be faster than trolling motors. Yeah, absolutely. Because, I mean, I think they're like four to five miles per hour. So, I mean, you're beating them. The hole on this one, it's like I said, the Predators and the Big Waters. They've yeah. got super fast holes on them. They're a little bit tippier than, I think, the, the 120. And you're standing up on this one? If you want to, yeah. Have you ever stood up and, like, yeah. fish? Absolutely. But, I mean, I'm not going to do it in, like, the sound. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe if it's, no, yeah. if it's calm, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. That was like... that. That my me and my wife wanted to go rent kayak, uh, kayaks out in the sound. You know, they're uh, in, I think it was like Indian River and Old Tabor or something like that. And the guy go, listen, I go, I go to the guy I go, I'll pay triple. Just give me the one that won't flip. He goes, I got you. <laughs> He's like, you're not gonna flip this one. So we're in this little creek. I get in, I'm paddling. I flipped instantly. So that's that, that's like as far as I go with kayaks. It all depends on how high you sit too. 
I got you. They, they have seat risers. I put some seat risers in mine just so it's not like, doesn't feel like you're getting shot out of a rocket. Because you know, <laughs> some of them you're leaning back. You so know? are you saying lower is better, obviously? Lower is more stable. Yeah. But I don't know, me being a bigger guy, I like, I like being up more. Yeah, me too, definitely. Yep. So you would need some seat risers, but guarantee you would have no problem in uh, either an Old Town Predator or like the Big Water. Or I love my wife, and I'm not going to buy a kayak, I promise you. Well, those are a lot cheaper than the Hobies. The Hobies are wider. Those are the most stable, but they're big and heavy. What, and what, what's yours again? Mine's in Old Town. Old Town. Old okay. Town. You get mine's around th- three thirty three hundred right now. With not with nothing with nothing on it. But okay. that that's, comes with the pedal drive. It's five year warranty on the pedal drive. So these guys got like ten thousand, twelve thousand dollar rigs, man. Well, now I do with all my stuff. Yeah, well, of course, yeah. Yeah, but the Hobies are like fifty five hundred. I mean, I love fishing. I let everything go. I, I don't I don't keep anything. Um, I'll catch and release stuff. The best tasting freshwater fish I ever had was like like a sunfish. Okay. Believe it or not. So yeah, those those panfish are good. Walleye to me was better than like cod. Really? Yep. Hands down. Oh, I'm gonna have to eat one now. Yep. There you go. <laughs> See? One you go. one without lead in it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no lead. You don't want lead poisoning. Dude, before we get past too far past your actual setup, when I'm kayak fishing, I have a really big problem with like gear, like uh, tackle specific, like lures and stuff. So I have a box that I just bring. It's like one t- small pla- uh, plastic tackle box. And I just put in like six, seven different things that I want to throw for the day. On your rig, do you have like – because on the, my boat, I have a whole compartment. You always want to bring too much, Yeah. unfortunately. You, so you kind of I – mean, I, I narrow everything down. But you can still bring a good amount on those kayaks. I have a whole like – I think it's a There's wilderness. a compartment? It's a, it's a whole – crate and it actually has rod holders on it so i use rod holders that are built into the kayak there's yeah, three yeah. built in and then i have like four more on my cart now i usually go out with six or seven rods which my father makes fun of me for yeah and he's like he goes i, I go out with one and i catch more than you <laughs> he, he doesn't so uh there's this place up in mass it's pretty hairy yeah about 20 minutes from where my cottage is and um which is funny because the fishing at my cottage kind of sucks I remember you telling me that. Yeah, so it's very. It's got a lot of pressure. There are fish in there, but you really got to know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, I know it's. They have tournaments, and the guys just leave pissed. I, I can see it on their faces. Anyways, yeah, back to the uh, <laughs> the illegal fishing. <laughs> and you're the guy on the jet ski. Funny story. I was on my jet ski. This was uh, a couple months ago, this summer, and uh, I went to this part of the lake. I know where there's always, you know, it's the deepest part, but there's small, there's big smallmouth, uh, good sized trout, just salmon in there. And um, I'm just sitting there catching them one after another, all drop shot. Yeah. And uh, this guy in this beautiful Lund, like a big money boat, he comes up. And his wife's laughing. <laughs> right? And I'm like, what is she laughing at? And he comes over. He goes, can I, can I talk to you? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what's up? And he goes, he goes I just sat here for an hour. And he goes, I watched you catch more fish than I have all week. Because <laughs> he's rented a campsite, right, like at, on the Otis Camp thing. And he's been there, and he hasn't caught shit. And his wife's laughing at him, and I'm on the back of a jet ski, with a dr- just pulling him in one after other, and I'm like, "Drop shot, bro." What were you using for bait? Uh, Z-Man. Um, crap. What are they called? Oh, I, I we don't... we I think we have. They uh, got the yeah. little. They're about this tall. Yeah. They're fat. They got the split yep. the center, but the little little. We tail. use the same trick shot Z. Z-Man trick shot Z. That might be them. Yeah. That, that is. A- they look like small little shiners and just drop down there yeah. and just sits in the bottom and just a little yeah. shake. And the trout love. Everybody loves them. Small yep. mouth, everything. You catch any? How big a trout you catch? Uh, they're bigger than Connecticut trout. Are they five pounds? Seven pounds? My father caught a four and a half pounder up there. Yeah. I saw a salmon swim by my dock that had to be two and a half feet. Big, okay. Big bastard. It was nice. Um. What's your favorite? My brother-in-law really got me into trout fishing this past year. Like he he's got a fourteen pounder mounted on his wall at his house, brown trout. I caught a seven pounder with him, like big beautiful fish. What are your favorite? What's your favorite couple species to target? I target mainly <coughs> largemouth, uh, pike, stripers. Um, calicos are fun. I've caught some nice ones. Smallmouth. I love I love fishing smallmouth. Yeah, yeah. That goes back to the... So, sounds like you just love fishing, bro. I do. I do. You know, I just... I hate, like... Yeah. I hate doing the power bait trout fishing where yeah. you, mm-hmm. you cast it in the water and you, like, you know, might as well break See, out a book. I, we, I, I hate that. We switched gears a while ago. Like, when we started... We were fishing in a club, and I'm just like, dude, I just, I just want to fish 
and like we're multi uh, species fishermen. Like I don't, I don't, I, I, I target smallmouth. Like, but I'll go for anything. Like, yeah, same. I just want to have fun. You know, I don't yeah, care if exactly. I don't catch a thing. Yeah. I just like being on the water, yep. and it's, it's. I find it relaxing. It's like therapy. Yeah. But and I tell you what, I want to catch is a carp because they. Sore. We tried. Almost got flipped by a carp. <coughs> it shut. It was that big. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're talking thirty five pound, forty pound carp. Yep. We haven't. We haven't. Shooting underneath, you almost flipped the kayak on me. We, we haven't established them. the carp patients yet. We're not there yet. No, we just, we don't want to figure it out. Remember, remember I know where, where they fishing? are. If you want to go carp fishing, I got it to where you can't f- without hitting one. I know That's where they where are. That's where we were fishing. Like we were, we were fishing in a, a cove where they were doing that, and literally they were like porpoising like dolphins. Oh yeah, all over. We were waiting next rolling. to them, dude. Like shins rubbing them. They jumped to change the air bladder like levels and stuff to get huh. comfortable. It, it's. But yeah, you'll be catching nothing, and then this thirty pounder yep. will jump up. I almost got killed on the Connecticut River by a carp on my jet ski. I was, <laughs> I was doing about seventy miles an hour, and this carp came up right in front of me. I had a duck, and it went like right by my head. If that hit me, it would have broke my neck. Shouts out Keanu Reeves, <gasps> Ma- know, Matrix. I'm surprised you haven't hooked onto a sturgeon yet in Connecticut River. No, I've had friends that have then. Yeah, I have, have caught some. Yeah. Up, up, believe it or not, more towards uh, where the farms yes. in the river yep. meets. Uh, the, mo- the biggest carp, uh, carp, sorry, the biggest sturgeon that were caught up there were all by the Middletown area mm-hmm. that been there. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some hairy stuff that I didn't know what it was. So I just figured they were big catfish. Yep. Or I mean, I was just hoping it wasn't a bull shark because I know they're in. <laughs> <laughs> get I, get I, the heck out of here! I had a big bull oh, oh yeah! Way. Oh yeah! In the Connecticut River, there's 100 percent bull sharks. In Connecticut. River. All my friends go, "You're full of." Shit. I thought they were tropical. No. no. Come on. No. The biggest great white I think yeah. it was in Long Island. So it was 17 oh, feet. Yeah. Like, it swam. Oh, they tracked a 17 foot great white. It went all the way through Long Island Sound and it went to Greenwich and it wanted to eat rich people. And then they were like, <laughs> no, it spit one out. It came all the way back out. Come on, man. Eat the Obamas. Connecticut River is like your home lake stomping grounds. Yeah, it's, uh, there's everything there. There's everything. And you, you can go further down to the brackish water. Yeah, then you get to the stripers. But... So when you go to the Connecticut River, like, is it, do you have a plan when you're going or like, like, you know what you're going for? Or is it like you go and you're like, nah, ba- it looks like a bass day. I'll like- check the tides. I, I like going Salmon River. Salmon River's nice. Um, I try to stay away from the, the main parts of the river because I don't want to get run over by some rich guy in an awesome boat. <laughs> right. Not alone. Just, not, it's not about just getting run over. I love big blocks and like 2,000 horsepower, but I just don't want to get run over by it. If the boat's awesome, it just makes it so much worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> But I try to stick to uh, the coves and stuff because a lot of times that's where the pike are. Yeah. You know, they're hiding either in the entrances or sometimes in deeper spots during the summer, obviously. Yeah. But um, the bowfin. Dude, so that was the most interesting thing that I've ever heard. <laughs> like, I, well, I thought it, I wrote down snakehead because I thought. They look like them. I, I'm bowfin. They're like the air breathing fish. Like, they're crazy. Well, they got, they've got gills. Yeah. But if the water doesn't have enough oxygen. They poke their heads up like up, uh, what's yep. called the fighting fish. Yep. They just go, and you can see them. They come up and go, yeah, man. And they come down. See, <clears throat> I saw them in Clayton, and I was like, I, I know I saw them. And I was like, what? And I looked them up, and I asked some people, and they're like, yeah, they're in there because they have that dot in the tail. Only the males. Like, okay. So I was like, I always thought like down south. And then I started talking to you about that, and you're like, dude, I catch them in Connecticut River. I'm like, no way. And you yeah. start. Show me pictures. And and they like, are they're, they're violent. A lot of people say, oh, they fight like crap. No. Let's talk about <laughs> that. So they, they are violent. And they're in literally like four inches of water. You don't think they're there. If you cast, you almost want to land it in the grass and then pull it into the river because they're that shallow. They, they're hiding right on the edges. Do you live scope them or do you just? Sometimes you can, but a lot of times they're just sitting there, not moving. And you just random casting grab? Random cast. And then you just see, like, you pull your lure. And you just see this splash behind it like a torpedo just got launched. And the, wa- sh- the water's shallow enough so you can see them You can see them track it. And they're coming yeah. right at it. And, of course, you want to – but you can't. you got to wait till you feel them. Mm-hmm. And sure enough, you nail them. Man, they, they just start pulling, man. And they, they're like alligators because of their shape. They start rolling Yeah. as soon as you get them. And, uh, and it's like they got big teeth on them. But you gotta, it's weird. It's like a, you hear them biting down. If you pick them up, you hear them doing that. Yeah. You know, yeah. you you hear them chopping. It's like, oh man, and oh. they got they got big ass freaking teeth on them. But you got to be careful. It's like a, it's like a softer jaw though. It's almost it's not like a like a pike where you can feel the cartilage and stuff. Yeah. So when you're hooking, you got to be careful because you you can hurt them. So when you're when you're catching them, 
you know, like a, a, a if you hit five pound bass, that's like a that's like a celebration. The the bowfin, how what are we talking size wise? Biggest bowfin I caught was six pounds. Um, I think the state record is eight. That's a big fish. I haven't even like I, seen I had this one fish. On, probably twelve. It looked like uh, a dirt bike tire from the back. <laughs> God, I swear to God, it came out yeah. of the water. I'm like, holy crap. This is a hilarious comparison. That's like, what it looked like. I think, I think kayak fishing is totally scary because you got to remember, it's, when, you're it's on your lap. You're, oh, you're, yeah, you're, you're taking right the hook out on your lap. You're ready to hug them. Yeah, you're like, oh. That, and they're, they're right there and your feet, they're flashing around. Your yeah. toes are there. But like I said, it's if this is the water line, it's literally like a, take a tire, a big street bike tire, and just lift it up. It, it was just massive. Um, he ended up getting off right next to the boat. I don't obvious story, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, yeah, yeah. I believe <laughs> Never heard that one. Yeah, we all heard that. <laughs> awesome, awesome fight. Um, I know, like the males, sometimes when they're breeding, their bottom it looks like you spray painted them green, like the color of your hat. Shouts out dishes. Their, and fishes. their fins are, are <laughs> they're chartreuse. I swear to God. Wow. They're like this crazy green, and a lot of times their their mouth gets green too. It's it's the neatest thing. Damn man. I but can't they even... are they're violent and they're right next to shore. Like you think nothing's gonna be there. And what are you using? Uh, for those, I use the uh, it's the Kitech Shad Impacts. They love those. It's like a five five and a half inch Shad Impact. What I brought that, some. Like a, a swim bait or something? I don't even know what that is. I know the Kitech. I got, I got uh... one in the bag if you want. Yeah, yeah I'll grab that. Um, they're awesome. They're scented, but like I said, they get destroyed really easy. Yeah. Um, but they're awesome, awesome lures. I use those weightless, uh, with, uh, I want to say it was a four out hook and they absolutely destroy them. Okay. That, um, frogs, they love the frogs. I didn't even, oh, really? Wait, dude, you catch them on frogs? Bro. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my God. That's one of their main things of food. Dude, I, did you see? Because these fish, these fish are where normal fish aren't. Did you see that, that rat or mouse lure? Dude, the yeah. BZ rat. Yeah. That's I, like I fish crack. It. it looks like it looks. My like buddy it. got me into that. He gave me that one. <sighs> I didn't bring my dude. I, I've got I've got lures. This freaking big. Yeah. <clears throat> dude, I didn't even realize that bowfin were a species of fish that you could even fish for in Connecticut. Like, no, they're great. These right here. Oh, it's kind of like a fluke. I got five you. Five and a half inch, and they they yeah. got a scent to them. But they do. They got such a nice action. It's like a fluke. Like you said, they're soft, but the scent's already on them. The action is awesome. Dang, we gotta, dude. We gotta zooms, zoom flukes. When's the uh, when's the prime bowfin season? Pre spawn, that, spawn, post spawn. Like, every time I've gone, they were biting. Seriously, <laughs> wow. And like I said, they're in the the dead areas that where there's less action and it's just dead calm. Or even when the tides change, and say there's heavy weeds midsummer, the tides go down, and you'll have, <clears throat> you'll see pockets of just deeper water, and then it looks like shag carpet gotcha. on the river, and, and you're just like, hey, it's so thick, how can that something even be in that? Well, they're in there, but they're trapped inside the pools. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so if you're if you're on the river and the, and the tides going down, like I said, and you see the, you see the the weeds where it looks like a carpet, and you see a part where it's actually not weeds. There's fish hanging in there because they, oh, yeah. they either got trapped in there from the gotcha, tide gotcha. and they're sitting there, all the bait fish are in there. Yeah. They're all next to the shore and you, you just watch them. They sit right in there and you cast and, you, and like I said, torpedo launches from all different directions and they're just, every cast they're nailing it. You can't catch them on a boat though. You have to have the kayak. Oh, you can get them on a boat. I'll take my boat. Gangsta. No, no, hey. No, no, we, Where I catch them, you can, we can bring your boat. All three of us, we got to do a video this summer or whenever, Absolutely. dude, like whatever month. Where I catch those, the big bowfin, and it's funny because where I go, guys are scared to bring their boats in there. Yeah, they they are, but it's it's all sand. You think all three of us will fit on that on the kayak on his boat? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a lot of sexy men on that. Right, boat. right. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm serious. Like, I wanna I wanna catch one of those fish. Like, I. It's They're cool. A blast. It's cool targeting like new species and and just like we, like me and my brother in law this summer. You ever fish for musky? No, and I've never been up uh, north enough. For yeah, so one to go. Well, I mean, you have you seen you seen the muskie they catch in like Little Noah? Have you seen those? Yeah, they're beautiful. So he's got he's got these lures. I don't know what they are. They're what the name of them are, but they're like uh, soft, and then their tail is like a really squiggly, like a grub tail. Uh, I think they're medusas. Dude, you you probably know better than me. I actually did that with uh, I, the Z-Man chatterbaits. Yeah, I get the bigger chatterbaits, and then I get the Z-Man grub tails, and the grub tails are big. Yeah. And I kind of make like a poor man's the pike like those right? Musk. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I go with like the red colors with with a chatterbait, and they like the noise. Smart. Yeah, man. And 
We went out after that kid. Bomb off too. Yeah. Brush him. That kid last year, he caught like that like 40-inch muskie on uh, Little Noah. And then uh, me and my brother-in-law went out and literally for five hours, <laughs> we threw those musky lures. Like just nothing. We don't give a crap about anything. We just want one of those muskies. Yeah. Didn't catch one. <laughs> yeah, they're out there though. Yeah, I know. They're out there. But I would totally do the same with, with those bow fins. <laughs> yeah, they're, like I said, the bow fins, I can put you on them. Guaranteed. Hey. Thanks, Dad. You know, when, when I went striper fishing down in the lower Hoosie, you know, he talked about drop shotting for him too, and like that's that's pretty boss too. Like that's drop shotting for striper. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, no, that's cool. Like I, I didn't even think that. Lunker City, they they have like the ten inch uh, finesse fish. Yep. And they had I think it's like black ice, and it looks just like the uh, what is it, the herrings? I forget, what, I forget what fish it was. The the bait fish. It's the black top with like the yeah the sparkle bottom. Yep, yep, yep. And I don't I haven't seen them on the website, but dude. The stripers love them. Oh, yeah. Yep. Same thing. I'll fish them weightless. Just they got an ADOT uh, EWG hook. Cast that out, and the stripers just destroy them. And it's just it's awesome. We fished in the Housatonic River for the stripers. Never. I never went out to the Connecticut River. I've gotten them. Um, there been times I got them at the, uh, the Salmon River. Yeah. And there's a channel. It's it's pretty shallow in there, but there's a channel that goes in between. And I remember I was it was a real slow day, and then it started raining. And I was like, son of a <laughs> And uh, all of a sudden, the water just started boiling all in the channels. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> this is either fish or uh, something from the nuclear power plant. Oh yeah. Um, but it, sure enough, it was it was schools of stripers. Yeah. And uh, like I said, I turned on the uh, the active target, and you can see the bait balls. Actually, just they go into a ball, and then they start turning into a tornado, and you can watch the stripers come up underneath them and split them in half. <laughs> like it's crazy. Dude. The active target stuff is insane. You can you record it? Yeah. Oh man, I've that... got some recordings on my phone. You can you can do whatever you want. But I'm telling you right, like I'll go out if I find the fish. Say the fish are in the center of the lake one time. I'll find them there. Okay. I'll get back to the same place next day. The fish are gone. Yeah. And you're like, what the f? So then you just go around, paddle around a little bit. Sure enough, I'll start finding the bait fish, and it's like McDonald's. You find the food, you find the big guys. Right. And yeah. I'll, it'll put me on the fish within 20 minutes, and instead of wasting your whole day, because you always seem to find the fish like when you got like an hour left. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. You know, you just. But you gotta uh, go, and then you hook on. It's say I won't even bother wasting my time. I'll just I'll zoom around. I'll scan real quick. I'll find them, get on them, and then that's it. That's why like on, that's why like on our trips like we we just put like serious time in. Like we don't give up. Like we'll be out there 10 hours. And, oh yeah. Uh, I do know, the same thing. My dad's like, how's your not fall off yeah because the seat's super comfortable yeah it's not like the regular kayak i'm telling you regular kayak awful oh yeah if you're I, in there i know you're in there for a long you're literally like oh man it's like, it's awful dude i gotta i gotta ask quick you you know the connecticut river so well i've i fished a few tournaments there and i never did crazy good i caught like three bass three bass but i i, I went up the river cruise up the river and you see like all these uh like these concrete structures there's tons of woody debris next to them. The river's not, it's not too wide. And then like go up a little bit further. There's like a little stream rolling in, fish there, caught one, whatever. My, my question is like, there's certain lakes like Candlewood or, or you know, you can kind of dial in like grass, offshore rock piles, flipping, flipping like structure. Connecticut River, what's like your go-to bass fishing strategies there? Like the crazy thing about the river, it changes every day. Yeah. Yep. It changes every day. I mean, you you go there one day, it'll look like something. You go there the next, and it, you can't even recognize it. Either the log moved, the tide's totally different, and the fish are changing with the tides. If the tide's up, then they're in the grass more. If the tide's down, then they can't get to the grass. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's tough. You, yeah. I said, you got to get there, and that's where, like I said, some guys say it's cheating, but the electronics, just finding the fish to know where they are and finding the bait fish. Yeah. It, it's you spend a lot of time it. there man yeah like I mean, like i said i love it out there i just like being on the water and it's fun with the electronic just watching the fish it's like watching a fish tank yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. you're watching them swim around live <laughs> it's like holy crap how cool is that like i said i hit you I, still gotta catch them though you know it's like, dude you know. oh yeah dude i can see my lure out there yeah. and i see him come up to it yeah. and then they go mm, no nah, not today <laughs> and, and like and, 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 you and, no, you, you'll see this giant fish come up to your lure and it just literally goes yeah, yeah. And you're like, what am I doing he wrong? Tail slaps it, it away. Seriously, it's like, what am I doing wrong? And like I said, uh, one of the last times I went, I was pedaling. It was that night, and I hit a pike. Yeah. I got nothing all day, 
And I, I hit something. All of a sudden, all the splashing starts happening. I'm like, what the hell is this? I just stopped. And I have the active target. And he was on the top surface of the water, so it didn't pick him up. And I had it angled slightly down, so it just, it just didn't hit him. And um, <laughs> sure enough, I just sit there for a second, and you see the shadow come down. And here's this perfect pike silhouette casted right onto the side of the weeds and he just slowly swam by my live target i was like oh my gosh it's like you bastard <laughs> i don't know same spot it's where i caught that beaver oh the top did you hear that story no. <laughs> oh yeah you caught a beaver bro? if you get a chance to catch a beaver <laughs> was it like a like... do it <laughs> better fight than the snakehead or the oh yeah bowman? dude this i fought a thing for like half an hour which they chase after you first off. They don't want you there. I got you. They start slapping the tails yeah, at you and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I've seen that. But I mean, these things are just tight. They look like small bears. Yeah, yeah, they're huge. This thing was sixty, probably about 55, 60 pound beaver, and I didn't know it was a beaver at the time. So I'm the beavers are slapping their tails. I'm like, yeah, screw you two. <laughs> they're scaring all the fish, and I just cast out maybe you know fifty yards in front of me. Start reeling in. All of a sudden, boom! Feel, you know, yeah. it's tight. I set it. Rod starts screaming, and I'm using. I had chatterbait. No, no, it was um, it was a fluke on one of okay. my inshore rods. Because one of my, my buddies bigger, caught a beaver on a chatterbait. <laughs> but this freaking thing, what? Well, he just swam. He must have swam across it. So he he hooked into it, and I didn't know. Like I said, I didn't know it was a beaver, and that reel just started screaming. And uh, and I still, he's coming in. He's coming in. I got him from here, you know, twenty feet away, yeah. and it's underwater. You can't tell it's a beaver. And just fought him, fought him. I'm like, wow, this is like going to be, you know, a big ass female. Bike. I, was, I was guessing 25, 30 pound bike. If, you know, like, <laughs> I'm sitting here, I'm like, oh my God, this is going on the wall. PB. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is it. This is it. That's what I'm waiting for. I sh you not. I go like this, I get it right to the side of the kayak. Okay. Up comes up this big furry beaver, and he's just like this. <laughs> Look at it. And he's, he's got the, wire, or the fishing line all wrapped around. I'm like, oh my God, you poor bastard. Oh. And I, so is he, so so if I walk in your office, is he on the wall? No, no, no. He got listen, he he got away. Thank God. So okay. I'm sitting here. I'm trying to get the line off him and not lose a, a finger. And uh, then he took off again. Yeah. Where was he hooked? It went across. It was actually right here. Like right. <laughs> it was it. It got him right on the side of the mouth. Legally hooked. <laughs> but it, it wrapped him. So listen, all honesty, like if 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 the beaver was to like die and like in Maine they eat him. And I swear Supposedly to you... Supposedly they say the tail's good. They, no, they say it's like it's the best meat. I've never eaten one. I've Guys been in game. Maine that eat them say they're better than deer. Like, and I watched them do it. Like, I couldn't eat it because it looked like a giant rat. But... In the, in the show alone, they eat beavers. If we ever hook on one and, and, and like he doesn't make it... Yeah, I can't waste it. <laughs> that's just... Catch and cook. That's just being responsible. He got off. He ended up getting off yeah. and swam away. And he, he looked healthy. Hopefully the braid I hopefully the braid didn't cut him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but no, he big bastard, man. And the funny thing was, it was a full moon that night, and I told the story to my girlfriend, and she told me they actually the moon that night was called a beaver moon. Come on, bro. I swear to God, this was a couple months ago. Look it up. That's perfect. Look, look up the beaver moon. I caught a beaver <laughs> on, on a beaver, on a beaver moon. moon. Yeah, but I tell you what, if you can if you hook one. Hold on. It's fun. <laughs> you, it, the thing dove like a freaking fish. I couldn't believe it. Flip that back, George. <laughs> Sorry. They're fish, fish arrows. <laughs> Japanese, Japanese Oh, yeah. Okay. Dude, they love them. Smallies. Love these? Everything. Ears? Yeah. That's what I caught the bike on. Yep. I like that little silver in there. Fish, fish arrows. Fish arrow. Now, I want to say I use a four, three or four out on these. Fish arrow flash J. Japanese or something. But they're great, though. They just sit there, and they look so natural. Oh, yeah. And it just covers everything gotcha. up. Gotcha. These have such... Yeah, what are we doing with those? Those are massive. These stripers. are... Uh, yeah, I got gotcha. Stripers, that pike, were... smallmouth. I catch smallmouth and armor on these all day. On a 10-inch plastic? Jesus. All day. Dude, one of the... Besides drop shot, this is probably the smallest thing I run. Everything else is 7 inches. Yeah. Massive. It's a big one. But, uh... Those are killer. The action on the 10 inch versus, say, a 7 inch. Bigger the fish. bait, bigger the fish. But, dude, the action on these, just being bigger, you, they make special 8 out hooks for them, and they, they just they swim so nice. And the pickerel, everything kills us. Oh, this summer, <laughs> I caught, it was a normal, normal bite, pickerel, right? I get them, I set the hook, I'm pulling them in. I'm like, okay, it's a normal pickerel, it's like 14, 15 inches. All of a sudden, my rod just goes, whee! 
bam, like slams down, starts pulling drag out. I'm like, what the f is this? Right? Sitting there going, 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 pulling, pulling, pulling. All of a sudden, stops. Normal s. And I'm like, I'm like, what is going on? So I pull it up. I pull in, it's like a 15 inch pick roll, almost bit in half. Yep. Some, okay. What? So I caught the pick roll, and then Big Mama pick roll went, nope. <laughs> Latched onto it and didn't even get hooked. And pulling out my drag was just holding on to the fish. And it finally got off. And I get the thing, and it's split almost in two pieces. There's a snapper at Hearts Pond. It hangs out with me. I'll sit in there fish, and then I hear this. I hear, <laughs> right? I look over. Here's a turtle with like a deviated septum, and it sits. It sits there, and it sits. It just looks at you like this, and you can hear him. You hear him breathing. That's how when I know he's around. That's good old sniffles. And then he'll come down, and he just kind of walks away. Oh man! But you get near his nest, and so speaking of gear. I thought this would be cool, and I know you have a variety of gear. You brought a lot of stuff here, and you've used a ton of this stuff. So I made a little tournament. Uh, we've got 32 tackle brands. I even seeded them. So, like, I put, uh, like, a region in each corner, and I'm going to put this on the screen for the YouTube video, but uh, the one is the one seed, two is the two seed, et cetera. Like, and I did that based on what I thought was, like, popularity, that sort of thing. Um, we're going to go through this bracket and see what is the favorite and how we're going to pick each round is there's three of us. So like majority vote. So if we agree on one unanimously, it moves on. If it's two versus one, that one moves on. Right. But, uh, top, right in the top left, Lose and strike King, they're the same company now and they're obviously killing it. Number one seed versus depths, which is like, have you used depths? It's like a Japanese, uh, I have not, but I got to say everything Japanese is awesome. Okay, so there's a couple of tackle shops local here. One's in Newtown. Uh, they have depths and they have like these giant swim baits, like $100 bluegill replica swim baits. They also have like some cool top waters. Obviously, Lose and Strike King have everything under the sun. But uh, what do you what do you get? What do you guys? Th who's taking this one? <laughs> I'm I'm going to lose Strike King. And and how you can look at this is like. Which one of these, if you had to get rid of one in the in the world and have the other one like to buy stuff from? And I think I'm going to lose in Strike King too. I mean, yeah, I, just I, I have no experience with the depths, but like I said, yeah, same, everything same. I've ever used that's made in Japan is awesome. Yeah, Depths is a good company from what I gather. They take pride and quality in everything they make. The yep. reels, the rods, they're everything. They're they're just awesome. That was a stacked. That's a tough matchup, obviously, and and for this first round. Just cross out the loser. The, the next round, we'll write it in. So then we've got 13 fishing, the four seed, versus X zone lures, the fifth seed. I'm going to go with, this is my, my opinion, uh, unbiased opinion. Uh, I'm going to go with 13 fishing because I started dabbling in some of the reels, and I'm very, very happy with them. You got any experience with either of those? Can't, a, can't say I do. I'm kind of I'm, I'm loyal on my... Uh, my Shimano. Oh, we're going to get there, dude. They got a one yeah. seed in one of the brackets down here. Yeah, 13 Fishing is cool. What I like about 13 Fishing is they're doing some cool content. Like, they have really cool videos, which I appreciate. X-Zone, X-Zone is used by, like, Brandon Polinick. He uses X-Zone for, like, a uh, slammer, swimmer slammer, something like that. A swim bait and a drop shot bait. I'm taking 13 Fishing. I mean, at the end of the day, so, like, there's a couple of them that I, I don't even, like, depths i never even heard of until we just talked about it yeah i think a lot of it comes down to uh like who's spending the most money on like advertisement mm. right so like why haven't we heard of depths because they're probably just starting out they're probably just starting to make 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 it into the scene we're like so why haven't i heard of them it's, it has to come down to advertisement they kind of specialize in like those yeah. big swim baits yeah. you know if you're a big swim bait fisherman i'm gonna check them out though yeah yeah Next, we've got three seed Guggen and six seed Jackal. Jackal makes good stuff. I'm neutral about Guggen. I I, I don't want to clown. Go you know, Guggen is kind of gimmicky, I think, but they're just taking over yeah. the scene. I didn't know Shimano owned Jackal, but they make a lot of good hard baits. They also own power. I've never even heard. Yeah. Yep. You might as well keep this and study it. I'm taking Jackal. Yeah, Jackal. Jackal. Jackal moves on. They're doing good stuff, but Jackal wins that. Then we got Cabin Creek and Berkeley. You ever you ever use Cabin Creeks? 
I haven't used Kevin Creek, but I use a lot of the Berkeley scent stuff. The sector sprays. Yeah, Berkeley's a this is a tough matchup. Kev, Kevin Creek has like they're like a company based out of like Kentucky, like a small. You can only get them on ca- uh, Tackle Warehouse, but they have like some really cool. They have like a spider grub that works really well. Um, I just again like a seven seed. I was thinking of company. I tried to think of companies that were like not mainstream for these low seeds. I love Berkeley Bates. Same. I hate <laughs> Berkeley for their uh, production of the Berkeley Lightning Rod. Um, Shouts out. Shout out I've caught, I slayed on the Berkeley Lightning Rod. To <laughs> retiring that rod because um, you ruined my trip to Lake George <laughs> when my captain caught 25 smallmouth to mine nothing until I switched over to my Dobbins and fell in love. So Berkeley, discontinue the Lightning Rod. Are you taking Berkeley in this matchup? For the baits, not the rods. Yeah, they, they have the advantage here because they just make so much stuff. What do you think, Mike? Yeah, I, I would go with Berkeley on there. Berkeley gets But I just it. know you don't have any uh, – what's your – Lunker City on there. I told you. Like I said, I got, got the Lunker City shirt. Guys, plug in Lunker City. Lunker City, I – check your Instagram DMs. I sent you a DM. You didn't respond. Go ahead and send me a response. I said shop's right down the street from my house. I'd be happy to test out Lunker City lures if they ever get back to me, but they didn't make the cut. Oh. Go down. So we got Bass Pro Shop slash Cabela's. And Yozuri, which is another Japanese brand. Yeah. Like, so now we're getting—it's getting tough for me. I mean, I can't say I ever used Yozuri, but the Bass Pro Shop stuff I have used, I didn't. I don't know, it's like somebody made it in their garage. Yeah, you know, a lot of it's cheap. You know, like the Johnny Morris. Some of those Johnny Morris products are cheap. It has—it's missing stupid things like you know, like the cutouts for the hooks to make them weedless and stuff like that, just yeah. on the worms. And- the reason they got the number one seed is because I read that Johnny Morris is literally worth like four point three billion dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so I yeah, like they're just killing it. So I had to give them the number one seed. I do I, I do so I'm gonna pick them because I love going there and walking around the stores. Um I I think they come out with great deals because they buy everything in mass quantities. So it makes things somewhat affordable. With their, some of their deals are amazing, like you know, and they're legit, and they're two day shipping. And so yeah, I mean, Bass yeah, Bass Pro Cabela's, you know, um, yeah. So I'm gonna go with Bass Pro. If I had to wipe one of these companies off the face of the earth, it would probably be Yozuri. I I, I did a video where I did the fluorocarbon tests, and Yozuri's T7 fluorocarbon actually won. That line is freaking awesome. Uh, have you watched any of those tackle? Yeah, I did. This guy. <laughs> like I said, no, I, I did. I'm like, I, said, I usually run like either Seaguar so for my, my fluorocarbons or um, for the braids on Power Pro. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the braid test video? Yeah. Dude, you're... it was crazy. Like some of them, you're like 200 swipes. Other ones, you're at 60. It's like, yeah. what the? Do you, a... Did you ever get that moonshine braid I told you to get? No. Moonshine? moonshine? That's Power Pro. It's moonshine. I, I've got the black lights on my kayak. Yeah. Dude, it looks like a rave. I can't wait to get this. Everything's Shimano. glowing. Oh, it glows at night. Moonshine, yeah. Yeah, under under UV light. Bass reel right there. See, it looks yellowy. Yeah. Moonlight. If you had a UV light, that would glow purple. Wow. Or, uh, the floors are green. That's cool. And and it's just you can, if you're fish, if you're fishing worms at night, you know, not just going off field, but if you want to watch your line go out and you can see everything. Yeah. It's nice. I really think you should do another line test. I really want to add that. I want there. to. I just need a garage or a space to do it in. What's up? <laughs> got you got a space we can do it in. If you guys quiet down, you hear my boat crying outside. <laughs> so are, we, are we going with Bass Pro or, or Yozuri? I'm I'm going Bass Pro. I like Cabela's better than Bass Pro. I, Even though I, I know Bass Pro bought them, I know I second Cabela's them. used to be so much better when it was Cabela's. I agree. Either way, Yozuri's out. Next matchup, we got a four and a five seed: VMC and War Eagle. VMC is obviously mostly terminal tackle, hooks, weights, mushroom weights. I've got some VMC stuff. I don't have any problem with it. It's pretty good stuff. It's cheaper. I think Eagle Claw owns them. Oh, really? I don't like Eagle Claw. Eagle Claw's on here too somewhere. But I've got VMC stuff, and it catches me fish. Yeah, I'm going to I'm gonna get rid of Eagle. Eagle. What about War Claw? Uh, War Eagle. War Claw. I, War, I, I can't baits? say anything. I, Best spinner bait. I can't say anything. I never used them. I can't. I can't. Best spinner bait there is. Yeah? I think so. I don't really use spinnerbaits. So <laughs> this guy. Yeah. What? He doesn't use spinnerbaits. What? Very little. I use chatterbaits. And if I do use any kind of spinnerbait, it's just a spinnerbait hook, and I put it on a paddle tail. 
this would make. What are you putting on a trailer on your chatterbaits? Uh, like I said, I either do those the Z-Man uh, grub with the big tails, yeah. or I'll do some of the uh, paddle tail baits. VMC, we t we're taking VMC. Yeah, VMC wins. Oh yeah, dude, that's the green, green, green and white, white belly. Yeah. Look at my green pumpkins. These are just like in little Ziploc bags that I put scent on them and stuff. There you but, go. Dude, green pumpkin, man. Oh, perfect timing. We got Yamamoto and River to Sea, which makes the Whopper Plopper, and they make uh, some of the good cheap swim baits, big, large, like glide, yeah. glide baits. Once again, like I didn't know that. I like the Whopper Plopper. Don't throw it. It's great for my son. I think it's good for kids. Not my my vibe, but uh, I'm gonna go with uh, Yamamoto. Yamamoto. They're stacked. Yeah, that's why they get the three C. They're good. They're they're overpriced, but they're good. Yeah, Yamamoto. And then finally, we got the seven seed Kai Tech and the two seed Abu Garcia. So, I mean, I had a great year this year, not to always go first. I got to go to Kai Tech. I mean, that changed my game this year. Paddle tail, caught my 12 pound brown on that. Kind of surprised the shit out of me. I absolutely love Kai Tech. So do I. And I, I put them as a seven seed because, like, I don't even know where they're based out of, but they're not. They're not as mainstream as, like, Abu Garcia. I do like Abu Garcia, the Black Max. I mean, that's kind of started it all for me, but... Absolutely. Kai Tech wins that, though. Every, can... Everything they make is just... Their, their lures have such nice action to them. Yep. Like I said, they do get chewed up pretty good, but... You yeah. Know what? They work good. Right. All right, let's go up to the top right. We got Daioa and Duo Realis, who literally makes lipless crankbaits and spy baits. Um... Daiwa, obviously, the Daiwa Tatula, they make a lot of reels. I have some of the Daiwa uh, crankbaits. I'm oh, sorry, not crankbaits, uh, jerkbaits. How are they working? Good. Good. I mean, I like, I got Mega Bass ones and yep. Shimano ones, and, but they're good. Yeah. And they're reasonable. I got to go. <laughs> He's plugging Daiwa. <laughs> nice. I don't have any Daiwa reels, though. Yeah. I, I fish what? with the Tatula. But Daiwa and Shimano, I heard they're like neck and neck, but I, I've, I've never. Daiwa. Them. Dio was taking that one though. All right, I've been waiting to get to some of these for you. Z Man and Arashi. There's so many I have never heard of, and I don't know why. Arashi, they do glide baits, they do lipless crank baits, they do. Uh, it's gotta go to Z Man. Z Man's awesome. Z Man. Z Man is great. The only thing with the Z Man is their they're lures, they're so floaty. Yeah. Yep. You really gotta work on your weights. And honestly, like I like their their plastics because they're like that stretchy. You can get two thousand fish. What can I say? Something though, <laughs> they don't swim as well as a Kitek. No, no. There's something weird about them. They one they float more, yes. and you got to be really careful storing them. Yep. Because Z-Man plastic has to stay with Z-Man plastic. Yep. Even if it does touch each other, sometimes they get funky. If they melt, they melt. Yeah, yeah. they melt yeah. into each other. But. Uh, yeah, dude. I, I, I've noticed the shelf life because I even have the little Z-Man carriers, right? And some of the stuff, if the lures aren't separated, they get a little funky. Yep. That's that's my only downfall yeah. of them. But they're they're, good, they're worms. They're they're I, diesel baits. The diesel paddle fish. Yeah. No, they're, they're the they're bowfin. A great company. Love those. Yeah. And there you not, go. And they're not that big. That <clears throat> they're not that big of a company though. They're they're actually kind of a still. They're getting big, but they're like they're kind of still in the grand scheme of things. They're a small company. I I, I don't know. They're awesome. Their plastic is. B Lats uses them. He loves them. A lot of guys. Yeah. Shout out to B Lats. Seth Fighter. Z Man takes it. Mega Bass, the three seed, which they probably could deserve a one seed in some brackets, versus Molix, which makes like jigs, spinner baits. Uh, my Iconelli uses Molix stuff. Yeah. But I gotta go with Mega Bass for this. Yeah, I've I've got Mega Bass jerk baits and stuff. Yeah, and I've got one of their uh, oh, what's it called? It's got the little with the wings on the side. Oh my god, that weird thing! It's a split. It's a it's a swim bait type of thing, but it's got these weird paddles on the side. It's like a. Giant... It looks like one of those flying fish, right? Yes. It's a top water, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. And oh. most people are like, "Who? What the hell's gonna bite that?" I brought it to that place. <laughs> Dude, the small mouth, nailing that thing almost every cast. <laughs> awesome. And, and it's just, I don't know, it's a great lure. It's like yeah. 60 bucks. Right. But it's an awesome lure. And their jerk baits are great. Vision like 110s. The, I've got the, all the different dive uh, depths and everything, and I, yeah. I like their stuff. Yeah, Mega Bass is it's legit. Very legit. 
Outcast Tackle, which is like a jig hook specialty company. Their jig, they make really good jigs. And Zoom, I Zoom is my favorite plastic brand. Yeah, I'm going yeah. Zoom. Sorry, Outcast. I've got probably three hundred dollars of Zoom folks <laughs> at my house, and, <laughs> and that's like nineteen pounds of plastic. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. More than that. That's a lot of plastic. Yeah. Zoom, Zoom for me is great product. And and they win for price point. Oh yeah, they're all flukes, good. seven inch flukes. Yeah, the, the magnums. Oh my god, it's like all I use for a lot. Of- I want to support a lot of like local or like really small online mom and pop guys, but then I'm like checking their prices out, and then I'm like Zoom, it's like a dollar ninety six for for uh, you know. <laughs> yeah. So some of these round two around uh, yeah round two matchups are going to be amazing. <laughs> like I'm just looking. All right, let's let's slide down to the bottom here. I I don't even know if I need to talk about this one too much. We got Shimano, and I put slash G Loomis because they're they like co companies or whatever. Uh, yeah, uh, are they? Well, Gary Loomis got sick, he had cancer. That's right. He ended up selling the company to uh, Shimano. And they own, but they're still built in the U.S. Yeah. Okay. So Shimano has their rods that whenever they do in Japan or Malaysia, depending on what high end it is or whatever yep. level it is, but all the like the NRXs and stuff, they're still built in uh, Washington State, I believe. Okay. So if you had to pick between Shimano or G Loomis, they're the same. Okay. Right now they're the same, and, unless you okay. buy one of the old G Loomis rods. Yep. But once Shimano bought them, all the new like uh, the NRX Plus is the quality the same as the old ones? Oh yeah, they're okay. still nice. Yeah. Well, they've got the new uh, the new the X thing's supposed to be a little bit stronger. I have one uh, NRX Plus rod. Yep. And it's definitely got a different finish to it, but uh, all my other NX rods or NRX rods are just awesome. I mean, but they're I, all they're all Shimano. I don't have any of the older G Loomis rods. All the ones I use are made by Shimano. I started getting to the very low end of Shimano world, SLX, and you know that's just the entry level, if you will. And it's a great product. Yeah, if uh, I don't know, they're to me they're the most sensitive rods out there. They're awesome. Yeah. But like I said, they're built they're built in, in the U.S. still, which is good. But as far as build build quality compared to like a JDM rod, like the Poison Glorious yeah. or like the Mega Bass, I think the build quality looks nicer, like their wraps and everything on uh, the Japanese rods. But the NRX blow them away for sensitivity. Huh. You brought some nice stuff with you today. <laughs> yeah, those they're all NRX rods. <laughs> Dude, those are crazy. Yeah, man. Like I said, I fished I fished with cheap stuff for a while, and then I finally said, screw it. That's where I'm at. I'm spoiling I, myself. I yeah. started upgrading, and as soon as I started upgrading my rods and reels, but more so rods, I started catching just way the quality. It, it was worth the money. It's better stuff. It, not only that, I told my friends all the time, spend the money on the reel. Yeah. He's like, oh, no, I'm going to spend 60 bucks. Okay, yeah. And end up, you're going fishing, right? Yeah. And they're out there pulling bird's nests. Yeah, yeah. All day. Yeah. And I'm fishing. <laughs> well, it's the same thing. I, and I just wouldn't listen. I started... With a bait cast, you know, with my son, and, and with, he was probably like, uh, I don't know, like six or seven, and when I started getting the quality, he's he's whipping a bait caster. Yeah, even when thirty year olds, forty year olds can't fish with a bait caster, my nine year old does. My my buddy Frank, he cracks me up. We go fishing all the time. He yeah. he doesn't have any of the DCs, DC yeah. reels. He's got yeah. the regular ones, and I'm just casting into the wind and. I'm literally casting three times the distance oh, he yeah. is. And he's like, yep, yep. He goes, just cast that frog right into the wind. And I'm <laughs> literally, I can cast like 100 yards with that. It's amazing. <laughs> amazing. The, the NTRA's DC bait caster. Yeah, man. They are, they make that cool noise too. That wee. Yep. Oh, and, I see those videos. And, dude, they cast. Well, that's because like Shimano was a gear company first. Like when they make the bikes. The bikes. Oh, yeah. yeah. They yeah. were making the, like the mountain bike scene. So they're fishing really just so 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 who's going to buy some new gear tonight? Because I think as soon as we're done with this, I'm going to buy new gear. Shout out to my wife. I Let's love see you who wins much. the tournament. Uh, I don't need I don't need any more gear, but I mean, I'm kind of say, if you cast that, you're just you're, you're gonna throw out your other gear. <laughs> Can we go on the street later and see how it works? Yeah. We don't even need to talk about Spro. Sorry, Spro, you gone. Yeah, she's gone. All right, we got four seeds, six cents. In five seed Rapala. Oh, thing. that's tough. It is tough. I, I tried to get the four and five seeds comparable companies personally. The six cents frogs are awesome. Yeah, the Vega frogs. Awesome. Yeah. I've got like every color Vega frog. Yeah. 
and they are fantastic. And I like Six Sense. I've I've tried to, I hit them up in their DMs too. Like, they make some good they make some good content, and I, I think I could make good content for them. Yes. So I I, I like these companies like Thirteen Fishing, Six Sense, who are making videos like these new age videos, yep. and I'm taking Six Sense. I, so so like I love all their products because I use it. But there's something about Six Sense, their packaging. They go, yeah, it's like an iPhone. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're like the those quality. Have you seen those swim baits they have? Yeah, Trace. Yeah, oh yeah. They're they beautiful. come in like white boxes. Okay. Literally yeah, it looks so like an iPhone, bro. They're really? pack, their yeah. packaging is nice. Like I said, I've got some. There was I got a fish arrow, same thing. It's a nice yeah. box like that. I have some of the higher end um, uh, Rapala twos, the saltwater stuff. They got better works cases. good. Mega ba- Mega Bass too. Their, their cases are nice. Yeah. But six cents to me is like a high, like a like like hoity toity fishing gear, like their rods. Nice. Like I'm gonna go with six cents because yeah. because you know what, all my rapper lures. If I catch a pickerel, the paint's coming off. Yeah, yeah, yep. And, and my <laughs> right, right. and my older yeah. ones didn't do that. Like my rap lures I, from the '80s, the paint stayed still on. Still painted by yeah, the same guy. I, I mean, I'm not. Yeah, right. But we're... Owner who pretty much strictly hooks. I love their hooks. I use. Same, same, and Dobbins. especially their spring hooks, their spring hooks, and I they have something to do with uh, was it Gary, Henry. was it Gary Yamamoto, yeah. or something like that. I, I don't know if they make the hooks for him or he makes hooks. There's something like oh yeah, that's They're, all I use is owner and yeah. If anybody bad mouths Dobbins, you can get on my. Well, this oh, is an interesting matchup. It's Gamagatsu, I'm sorry, not Yamamoto. That's Gamagatsu. cool. Yeah, Gamagatsu. yeah Gamagatsu. That's what. I'm, yeah, sorry. Dobbins changed my fishing game, and they're not. They're not like a high end rod anymore. They're like I would say they're like a like the top of the end of entry level for a good rod. You could get a nice Dobbins for a hundred and fifty bucks. And you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna catch fish, you're gonna feel the bite. I would say they're the high they're the highest end of an entry level rod. You know what I'm not seeing out here? There's no St. Croix. I know. I, I could only pick a few companies. <laughs> I love St. Croix. Yeah, can, I got St. Croix. They so, make great stuff. You're right. So if you go on my boat right now, all my gear is Shimano, Dobbins, St. Croix. Yeah, I, lo- I love St. Croix. They make really I will say this. St. Croix is the same level as Dobbins. It's the highest end of entry level rod for price point, right? Once you get past that, now you're getting into your gear and higher like you know what i mean like your gears high end mid-level would be like the lower end of shimano i think dobbins st croix they're the, the the highest end of the entry level i almost bought one of st croix's musky rods it was that close, <laughs> that close. tonight is a night <laughs> oh, yeah. let go home light the candle now they got those new musky rods it's, it's not the it's the legend the are they like 11 foot <laughs> Uh, they go. F- they say you're supposed to go over eight feet for the muskies usually, but yeah, they got one that's like eight six. I was ooh, I was that close to buying it. I don't use Dobbins except for when I'm on your boat. I'm taking owner. I I use their hooks all the time. Yeah, for ho- for hooks. Well, them. you're the deciding factor there, Mike. Owner hooks. It, that's um, all I. Dobbins, see ya. Owner and how do you pronounce it again? Gamagatsu. Dobbins. Do <laughs> No, we're not Gamagatsu. What? No, I thought you were talking about Dobbins. Like, no, 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 no. Oh, Gamakatsu? Gamakatsu, yes. So Dobbins wins that? No, we both picked owner. I'm, I'm for the hooks. Yeah. So you guys trump me. Yeah. That's how this works. It's, it's a majority. Hey, hey, Dobbins, if you yeah. if you give us a deal, I'll just help me out. You heard them. You heard me. <laughs> Last first round matchup, we got Yum. I love that Yum Money Craw. And Eagle Claw slash Trocar, which you said you don't like, but I put them in here because... They're like Walmart's, yeah. Like hook, and I use the Trocar hooks. I did, I did Same. that video on the Trocar hooks. They, they, they're sticky. They like once they get in something, it's hard to get them out. But they're a really, really lucrative company. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm gonna go with Eagle, Eagle Claw, Trocar. And what this is hooks wise, we're talking. It's just whatever company that you want to wipe from the face of the earth. I don't use Yum. Um, I, I'm sorry, I hate Eagle Claw. So you're taking Yum? Yeah. I was just, I don't know. I always hated Eagle. You know what it is? I reminds me of my uncle, my uncle Ralph, and he always had this sh- fishing gear, and he had Eagle Claw. <laughs> I, Eagle Claw. You know, like have, the swivels that don't lock. Have you used the Trocar hooks? I have not. I have not. I'm taking Trocar. I, Same. 
like they're I guess they're the same. Not gonna company. knock it, but I've used Eagle Claw and I've had just yeah. ping or bend or it's Trocar is like only on Tackle Warehouse, I think. I've had Eagle my drag Claw. set perfect and have a bent hook. Yeah, yeah. I've had it. The Eagle Claw stuff's cheap. The Trocar hooks literally at the end of them is like a it's like beveled. Like it's 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 strange. They file it so it's like super sharp, just the point of it. Hmm. And once you get it in the fish, it like it's really hard to come out. Check out my hook testing video when you get home. Yeah, I'm gonna. Have to, I, didn't, I didn't see that one. I'll check it out. I'll check it out. Oh, yeah, I won't spoil it for you actually. All right, we got round one done. Now we're, right. gonna, now we're gonna zip through these. So we, let's go back to the top left. We got lose versus thirteen fishing, lose and strike king. Versus thirteen. Fi- these are where the matchups are gonna get good. Mm. I uh, there's so many strike king products that that I use. Yeah. Rage, Rage Cross. Yeah. Uh, Ocho. Uh, I, Dream I th- Shot. I think lose. If you're talking lose like reels and rods, I think they're below, in my opinion. Saint Thirteen Fishing is a step above them. Agreed. Striking just makes so much. Where's Thirteen Fishing made? Where? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where they're located. I, I gotta like say, them. I gotta say, I, I've never heard of them. There's your answer. <laughs> they have some very interesting reels. I like. Are they in mainstream stores or this online stuff? Uh, I'm not gonna say a store because you're gonna be offended when I tell you this. Where I buy my Thirteen Fishing gear. They don't sell firearms anymore. Oh, the big D. <laughs> the big D. <laughs> I think I gotta go with Strike King. Unfortunately. Not unfortunately. They just it's just the sheer I'll, amount. I'll, I'll go lose and I will I'll pick that one. It's I'm gonna tough. I'm gonna go lose because I have yeah, I have some they of their, their cheaper like saltwater okay. they win. rods and they, so or sorry uh, reels. This round you can write the winner on this these lines right here. Alright, so we got Jackal and Berkeley. I love Berkeley. Berkeley. <laughs> you ever use that Maxent flatworm? No. You should give him a package of those on his way out, dude. You haven't used those? No. Which one is it? This one right here. You could take it. The, like, the one that says forty five percent more grab, fish. Grab. He, yeah, dude. Dude, it's so true, bro. <laughs> hey, no, sir, try, grab dude, it. I use I use their their spray. You'll thank me later. I said, and like I said, I've seen it. Go ahead and drop shot some of them. I've seen it with the live bait. Give me a shout out for my. Sorry, not live bait with the live with the active target. Yeah, where I've squirted stuff, you get a hit, and you don't squirt it, and you can watch them. You watch it come up to it. Yep. See, see if you're a guest on our uh, cast, or well, not mine, but Tyler's cast, you get gifts, parting gifts. That's right. For my wall, I've watched my Tyler. Friend. That package is uh, ten dollars. So yeah. let me know. <laughs> yeah, dude. My friend Frank, I, he was fishing right next to me in his kayak, yeah. and I watched him cast out, and I could see his. I saw his lure drop. Yeah. On the screen, right? And I'm watching these big bass just chilling here. And he's reeling it in. I just told him, like, stop. And he stops. He's like, what? I'm like, just don't move it. I'm like, they're right on top of it. Sure enough, four and a half pounder. Oh. Those, are, those are the juice, man. Those are what everybody's chasing. Huh. I mean, the last few years, everybody's been they're blown. Yeah. yeah, they're blown out now, but they work good. Yeah, they look like uh, leeches, kind of. Yeah. Good but drop that, shot. Like, St. Lawrence River... Uh, Lake Ontario, that's that's the jam right there. Hmm. That one and the one next to it. What's that color again? I can't remember. Brown, uh, brown belly. No, brown that back? one's um, that one's brown back. Brown back. Aren't What's that? Berkeley that's baits. Gobi next to it, to the right. Yeah, something like that. Something Gobi. Aren't there Berkeley baits? You can't use them in tournaments. There's certain ones because they're scented. I don't know. Never. That's a good point. I don't know. Yeah. Just use them. <laughs> you fish in a ghillie suit. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. Uh, okay, I've, I've been dropping down the ghillie suit with the water department driving by. <laughs> yeah. It's like, when there's they, a 300-pound man. looks like a Sasquatch. When they come and get you, Mike, they're going to be like, you're going to be like, is this because I'm using, you know, Berkeley Power Bait Max Hat? And you're, they're going to be like, no, sir, it's your ghillie suit, and you're fishing on a reservoir. <laughs> All right, so Berkeley wins. So now are we going to just keep going with that yeah. same block? Yeah. So now it's lose versus Berkeley? No, no, Bass Pro versus BMC, the bottom. Oh, gotcha. Uh, that's, that's actually tough. I'm going. I'm gonna go. Well, oh, crap. That's so we gotta do Bass Pro, Bass Pro Shop or BMC. Yep. I'm gonna go Bass Pro. I love that place. 
I'm not going by the store. I'm going by the hooks that I like. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do VMC. I do like VMC. I have it Alpha. On the I'm taking Bass Pro. Yeah. I'm gonna go Bat Bass Pro too. Bass Pro takes it. I know. <laughs> I know. Who, I know who's gonna end up winning this. Bet. Have to. <laughs> Shout out to Bass. Shout out to Bass Pro. <laughs> Don't listen to Mr. McCran. Yamamoto. This is a good matchup right here. Yamamoto. And Kai Tech. Kai Tech. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I agree. Do you you agree, too. I do agree. But okay. it's crazy because Yamamoto is so legit. Nah, Kai Tech is. No, Kai Tech is, they is got, obviously. Kai Tech the to best. me is the best swimming plastic yeah. made. 100%. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It has the most action. Dude, Whether no, fast, no slow. Doubt. It, it is, surpasses everybody. Wait, it seems, some guys hook them upside down. They, yeah. Oh, you wrong. can hook them wrong, and they're great. Yeah. Kai Tech, yeah. seven seed, takes it. Yeah. Daiwa and Z Man. Z Man. I think so too. Yeah. Z Man. Yeah. Ooh, Z Man with the upset. Mega, this is a good one right here. Mega Bass versus Zoom. I'm oh. going with Zoom. We're going expensive versus cheap. I have to go Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hang on. The guy that brought, uh, you know, $3,000 of rods. No, it's more than that. It's probably six grand. Yeah, How many six rods grand versus rods. Two, three. And okay. I'm giving that's, him yeah. base. That's, over, that's about almost seven grand worth Where's of rods. Where's my parting gift? <laughs> yeah, it's average 1200 per so. he, he gave you a 799 plastic, yeah. bro. Like, come on. Is it 799? And I'll tell you what. <laughs> you got Venmo? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, bro. Zoom. I, zoom. I, I love Zoom. Yeah, oh, yeah. Damn, poor Mega Bass. But Mega Bass, they make good stuff. Yeah. Shimano versus Six Cents. Yeah, Shimano. Yeah, Shimano. We're all. I love. I love six cents, but. All right, we got owner and Eagle Claw. I think this is. A, I think this is a sweep. This is easy. What do you got? Where are you? Was owner, owner and Eagle Claw? Yeah. Oh, owner. Where are you? That's, Bottom right. That's like, Ferrari versus Buick. <laughs> owner and Eagle Claw? Yeah, bro. Owner. Oh my God, owner. All right, we're down to eight. We got our elite eight. So top right, we got Strike King and Berkeley, Duke, North Carolina. What do you got? Top Strike right. King, top left. My bad. Yeah. Strike King versus Berkeley. Strike King. Ooh. I think I'm taking. I'm gonna go Berkeley. I... <laughs> Are we can't... Oh yeah, no, I'm going Berkeley. I'm sorry. I- I'm going Berkeley because I like the bait. I don't. I don't like your lightning rod. <laughs> we know, bro. Is that bad? <laughs> that was a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> no. He we said have, that no, was... we have a whole shoot on that. He said that was a bad day. It was day. a very bad day. He caught 25 smallmouth to my nothing until I switched to my dobbins. It wouldn't be the man on the end of the rod. <laughs> no, it would no, not bro. be. No, it was it's not. It's totally the rod, dude. <laughs> he knows it was a rod. He knows. <laughs> like the fish know on the other end. Mike. They're like, I'm not touching that. No, it was that. (laughs) Mike. He was like, I I fell in love with Berkeley Night Rod because they're like 20 bucks. So I ended up buying like four of them because that's what I do. I'm like crazy. (laughs) And then I end up hating all of them, giving them all to him. I loved it. He was selling them. (laughs) All right. So Berkeley's taking that. Into the final four, Berkeley goes. We've got Bass Pro and Kai Tech. So Berkeley's going home? Berkeley's into the final four. Okay. Now you're going Bass Pro or Kai Tech? Yep. Kai Tech. Kai Tech. Kai Tech into the final four. I can't. I love them. Yep. Hey, me too. You saw this year with me just using Kai Tech. I caught. No, that, no doubt, dude. Yep. I use more Kai Tech than anything else. Yeah. When we were together and I hooked up, you're like, "What are you throwing?" You knew what I was throwing. You're like, "Kitech," and I was like, "Every, every, every decent catch this year was shout out to Kitech Pound." Yeah. We got Z-Man and Zoom. Oh God, that's difficult. Z-Man. I know it's a good no, one. It, it is, but Z-Man. Oh my God, I'm taking Zoom. That's like Kate Beckings or Carmen Electra. It's like, Zoom? what do you, what do you do? You're I taking, love Zoom. What? Zoom fluke, Zoom oh, brush hog. Oh damn, you're right. I love Zoom. It's Mike. Mike's the deciding vote. That's tough. I'm going Zoom. You ch- you changed? Yeah, I changed. You took the fun. No, of you it. start seeing some of the things I use, and you're right. I don't like I like Zoom because 
No, here's why. You want to hear it? No, honestly. Here's why. No, you'll agree on this. This is going to change your mind. I like <laughs> Zoom because they don't... They're, Z-Man has great products, but their plastics get funky. You've got it. Like, there's something with them. Like, they don't have a long shelf life. They're so, yeah, exactly. Zoom, dude. I have Zooms from like ten, uh, five years ago, six years ago. Here's, here's what I'm going to... Th- I don't Zoom like... Is. I'm going to go with Zoom only because I've never had luck using anything Z-Man without weights. Okay. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, you can't yeah. use a weightless. So, the only thing I, I've had that I used weightless, and it was actually the Z-Man floating worms for top water. Wow. And I actually did a wacky rig. You cast them out, and they just they're on top of the water, and you just wacky rig on top of the water. Yeah, that's that's my only reason. You you can't do yeah. them unweighted. You can't okay. fish them unweighted. That's a good point. So Zoom makes the final four. But but I will say drop <laughs> shot and a drop shot Z Man's work great. Yeah. Because you don't have to keep tension on it. You can just kind of right. It floats right off the bottom. Yep. So it's that, that's tough. Going. That's t- I'm going dollar point Zoom. Close matchup, but Zoom takes it. And now we're going Shimano versus owner. Oh, it's got to be Shimano. Yeah, Shimano's hard to beat. It's like Duke. You can't. Shimano. Shoot. So Who Shimano can, can takes it? Can anyone take down Shimano? Not, not in my eyes. <laughs> not right now. They're doing it right, man. All right, we got the final four. First matchup, Berkeley versus Kitech. Kitech. Yeah? For me, Kitech. I think... Because you know Why? I don't have to spray scent on my Kitex because they already stink. Yeah. They're smelly. So you're going with Berkeley? No, he's going he's taking Kitech. Like I said, Kitech doesn't need scent. It's already in it. Oh man. And Berkeley makes they're making hard baits now. They make these those jerk baits. They make line. Mm. I think if we pick Berkeley, it's because we're on the we're on the, the max scent. Yeah, flatware bandwagon. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Kitech. I really I really love them this year. Kitech. I makes like the their packaging. What colors you use? For what? Bluegill Flash. I use the Bluegill AU. Flash. Zoom versus Shimano in the final four matchup. Shimano has to go. Yeah. You know, Shimano is na- making spinner baits now. You see that? And they're making jerk baits. I want to get through yeah. new, that, the Ooh, armor joint. The Did you see the new armor joint? No. What's the price point? <clears throat> armor joints are spin. Uh, well, the no, armor joints are like Shimano. 40 bucks. For, for which thing? Well, he's like, what's the price point of like their. their I just saw the spinner baits. Their they're called like Swaggy Strong. Swaggy Strong. Like, I don't know how much they're they gonna are. They're going to be good. Sure. I have some of their. Um, I didn't bring them through on the other rod. Um, it's the. BT Force, the J- Japanese stuff, JDM Shimano stuff. Yeah, and it's got it's a top water, and it does this tail wag, dude. It's awesome. It, the action on them, you can sit there and jer- they look real. Yeah. So I've got that for top water. That's a seven inch think, uh, swim bait. Yeah. But top water. I think Shimano is definitely got to go. They're they're most. I think right now they're the most innovative, like staying ahead of it. And now they're gonna come out with like you just you just. I know I saw that. They're coming out with gear, tackle. That new armor joint thing I want to try because it's yeah. it's got magnets in yeah. it. it. It bends the lure so you can cast it yeah. further, yeah. and then it like comes out. It's insane. Yeah, I saw that. Yes, I yes. Then they have, uh, I think it's a World, Shimano World. They're uh, jerk baits, but they've got like the, the flasher inside them with the, with the weights. You're talking about how the weight stays at one end of the bait, they cast it, and it goes to the other? It literally, like when you cast it. The swim bait falls in half. Mega Bass has stuff that does that too. Yeah, and then it goes, you know, it releases. Yeah. It's crazy, crazy stuff. All right, we got the championship. It's Kai Tech versus Shimano. Oh, God. Oh, that, I mean, Kai Tech is the seven seed, and Ka- Shimano is the one seed. I think it's two different. That's tough. It, it's a tough because it's totally two different people. Yeah. Well, it's just, it's too. Doesn't make reels. You got to erase I'm rods. going so- soft baits versus the best reels on the market. Yeah, right. And rods. They make decent That's it. making decent rods. And now they're making hard baits. <laughs> yeah. I got to go with Shibata because they're the most inv- And I hate that because you guys are going to hate us for this because everybody's Shimano. I got to give it to them because. Versus- yeah. yeah. Shouts out to Kai Tech for, ma- for making the championship round. Yeah. And listen, I think there's people at Kai Tech right now that are like, hey, we made it, but we'll, we'll, we'll bow down to Shimano. Yeah, that's pretty 
You have to. Shimano's the champion. You hate to say you hate to see a number one seed winning the title, but Shimano and Kaitech, well represented. Awesome. <laughs> Hell yeah. Well, we, we covered a lot of ground. We got tons of good stuff covered tonight. We're going to get Mike. We're going to get Mike out on a, a fishing trip this year. You're going to put us on some bowfin. I'd yeah, I'd love to. Right. I'd love to. All right, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. <laughs>